I would love to be there, you know. Perhaps I might have used two cans with a, a string between them to make an announcement. But I think it's too far to have two cans and a string from Glenbrook to St. Stephen's. I wonder what ways they used to announce things years ago. Sometimes they had fires on the hills. Sometimes the Indians had smoke messages. Today, we have the internet. We have the telephone. We can send uh, messages through text. But how did God announce to us? You know, I'm a math teacher. We have some strange punctuation in maths. One where we have three dots, two on the bottom and one above it. And that stands for therefore. And we use it to communicate, to announce something. And you know, nativity and advent, much of it is about God announcing to us. And I want to just look for a few minutes before we look at Luke chapter 1. This is 5 to 56 eventually. I just want us to look what the children have been doing. And I've been so pleased. And I must thank Sue for the, the books that we've been using. I've been doing some of the crafts. Um, and they give us some of the background to this message. It's like as if everything previous was a preparation for what came post. And there's a big therefore in the middle. Now, let me just show you what they've been doing quickly. Let's look at day one. Can you see that? Is that okay, Paul? Is that okay? Can we see it? Well, day one, what do you think it's about making? It's about making a candle. And it comes with a Bible verse from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. Now, those people live in darkness, but they will see a great light. Well, I thought this looks fine, but then I, I started to do it. And this is what I made. This is my candle. And uh, if you look at this, this is how I made it. I colored the top and rolled it up and made this candle. But even a small flame. Even a small flame can push back the darkness and show us which way to go. And the coming of the Lord Jesus is a light coming into darkness. And it shows people the way to God. That was day one. What did they do on day two? On day two, oh, I was very happy on day two. Because he had a bit of maths. Here it is, a bit of maths. This is a net of a box. And, uh, and it says this, at Christmas, God gave us the most special and surprising gift. Himself. And the Bible verse they gave for the day is this, from Isaiah. These are all prophecies. That begins with B. We've had publishing and announcing. A child will be born to us. God will give us, give us son to us. Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. And it tells us to sort of put something good and special inside the box. Now, let me just show you my box. 
First of all, there's my colouring. I'm not an artist. I'm certainly not an art teacher. But here's my colouring. And uh, But then I made it into a box. Here we are. Here's my box. Can anyone tell me? Uh, Paul, could you tell me? Uh, can I tell me a verse about a most inexpressible gift? Um, well, I can't remember it, uh, what it is, but Christ is our most inexpressible gift, yeah. Well, it's from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15. And this is what mine says. God's inexpressible gift. And it says there, give thanks to God. And in the build up to Christmas through Advent, we give thanks to God for the gift that was predicted, was prophesied way back in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. God would give a gift. On day three, I, I can't say, can anyone tell me? So I'll have to ask Paul this one. Paul? No. What do you think that's a picture of at the top? Uh, a baby in swaddling clothes. Well, I coloured my baby in and uh, don't tell me, Paul, it looks like me because there's not much hair. But can you see what the verse is? And this is how the birth of Jesus came about. We're now at that point of punctuation where God is going to do the most tremendous thing. And here is a baby. And I made that baby. Here we are. There's the little baby Jesus. I'm not thinking of becoming an art teacher, I have to say. But this is the baby, Jesus. And this is what the children have been doing. And uh, there's some strange things we ask the children to think about this week. As you choose a place to put tiny Jesus, the baby that they've made, remember, even though he was a baby, he was also God. And uh, today we're going to look about how this came about. Very quickly, I don't think this will fit my head, but we had, what does this speak of? It's too small for my head, but what do you think it's saying? It's a, a crown or a coronet. And the Lord Jesus was the Prince of Peace. Okay. And uh, day four, again, they looked at Isaiah chapter nine and verse six. His name will be Wonderful Counselor, the Powerful God. Father, who lives forever, the Prince of Peace. He's crowned. He's crowned as a prince, but he's now crowned with glory and honour because he suffered death for us. He is our king. Day five brought us to this. What do you think this is? Any idea? I can't ask anyone else but Paul. Paul, I'm going to play it. Well, wow, that sounds what like a trumpet. A trumpet? A trumpet. Yes. And uh, at various times during the Jewish year, 
<laughs> you have trumpets. They pronounce, they announce. But how was the coming of our Saviour announced? More about that in a few minutes. But on that day, this is what uh, the Bible verse was this week on day five. It's for tomorrow, this one. Or is it? No, it's for Saturday. He was in the world. The world was made through him. But the world did not know him. John chapter 1, verse 10. And uh, something had to be announced. It wasn't through messages of smoke. It wasn't through the internet. But God's own messengers came to announce. And the final day this week. Now, who do you think this is, Paul? Um, I guess Mary. It's Mary. Well, my art history must be improving. It's not my strong point. Give me a sum and I'm happy. But here's Mary. And the Bible verse... For day six is this, and it's from Luke chapter one, verse 30, the passage that we're going to look at in a few moments. This is when the angel Gabriel came to meet Mary. Would you be scared? Would I be scared? I think I would. They, um, I've never met an angel yet, but I think I would be a little bit taken aback. But the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, because God is pleased with you. And uh, basically, Mary said in her own way, OK. Even though she was scared, she was ready to... Do what God's bidding was. So that's the before, the previous. Let's go on to our first Bible reading, which is Luke chapter 1, verses 5 to 25, I think. Thank you, Paul. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as priest before God. He was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. 
The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. Well, have you noticed quite a number of things in that passage? There was lots of praise. There was praise in verse 9. There was prayer and praise in verse 10. There was the announcement, the publishment of the coming of John the Baptist. There was a prayer in verse 13 again. But there was also a promise in verse 13. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will call his name John. When God wants his people to be involved in service, he wants us to have the right attitude. He was righteous, and so was Elizabeth. And here we have that God, through the messenger, the angel Gabriel, gives a promise to Zachariah. Zachariah. But he's a prayerful man. I don't know if you know that not having a baby in a strictly orthodox uh, Jewish household can even today be a great problem. It's a great problem for many people who are not Jewish. But, but what was the family attitude to leave it in prayer before God? Echoes of this go back to Hannah in the Old Testament and Samuel. And she had Penaniah making fun of her. But prayer and God's promises go together. Will you notice something else was in this passage? The Holy Spirit was mentioned. Another word beginning with P is paraclete. Here, the Holy Spirit before the coming of Pentecost was evident in this special way. In Zachariah's life, the Holy Spirit was evident here. And when God wants us to work, we too must uh, know the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was mentioned that John the Baptist will be filled from birth with the Holy Spirit. And uh, we too. Harry, can you just move your camera? Sorry. Sure. We do. When we are called to serve, must seek God's filling. And must, as the people here were praying, there was worship, there was, in their form of worship, there was 
there was incense. And when God's people are in a worshipful attitude, then God can work amongst us. And then in verse 16, there was a proclamation. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. This is John the Baptist. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. He had an awesome responsibility, John the Baptist, to be the one who prepares the people for the coming of the Saviour. He was involved in his ministry in proclaiming God's kingdom, in proclaiming penitence and the need for repentance. And his purpose was to prepare a people ready for the Saviour. What's our purpose? Our purpose is to declare God's kingdom. To declare it and to practice what God wants in our lives. And then in verse 24, there's another P. He came out of the, uh, the synagogue or the place of worship. And he then, he couldn't speak. He was making signs and he went home. And guess what? Elizabeth was pregnant. And uh, when his time of service was completed, he returned home. And after this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant. And for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favour and taken away my disgrace among the people. She handed everything back to her God and Saviour. Let's go on to reading two, which is verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin, the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. I think there's a number of 
two things I just want to mention here. What would be the position of the Lord Jesus? He would be preeminent. If you look at verses 32 to 35, um, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And then in verse 35, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One who will be born will be called the Son of God. Didn't that come up in the Messy Church uh, Advent things for the first six days? There was a promise from Isaiah that a son would come and his position is absolutely preeminent. And notice also the role of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And uh, what an honor for Mary to be given the opportunity to be the mother of the human Lord Jesus Christ. And here we have one who is very God and very God. Begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, he became man. God contrasted to a span. How wonderful that Mary was obedient and the Holy Spirit came upon her. And let's go to reading three. Mary visits Elizabeth, verses 39 to 45. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. Well, I would have loved to have been on the walls watching this. Wouldn't you have liked to have been there when two very famous mothers-to-be met together? Mother-to-be of the one who would prepare the way of the Lord to make a people prepared and the mother of the earthly Jesus. And here we see the Holy Spirit at work again in verse 41. Here Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit. In this short study we see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all working together. We see God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Father who sends Angel Gabriel to this situation to make this tremendous announcement that the Saviour of the world is coming and we come to our final passage a passage which has enhanced worship throughout the world in many generations and later on at the end of our service we'll be singing tell out my soul the greatness of the lord which is a modern version 
of the Magnificat. Over to Paul for this reading. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months, and then returned home. So this incident we've looked at today was at the end of March. What we tend to do at Christmas, we bring nine months into about four days. But uh, many theologians suggest that the Annunciation was about uh, the end of March or in March. Well, in summary, um, let me ask Paul if he can see this. Paul, can you see that now? We've looked at this morning, God predicted what was going to happen. It was announced in the Old Testament. Now, those people who live in darkness, they will see a great light. God promised that light would come. And Jesus, the light of the world, came as a little baby in Bethlehem. On day two this week, the children looked at, a child will be born to us. God will give a son to us. God's inexpressible gift, our Lord Jesus Christ. We just looked at, how this birth of Jesus would be, uh, as it were, foretold by Gabriel to both Elizabeth, Zachariah, and uh, Mary. On day four, they looked at another wonderful promise from the Old Testament. His name will be Wonderful Counselor, Powerful God, Father who lives forever, the Prince of Peace. And day five, he was in the world. The world was made through him. But the world did not know him. And the question is, do we this morning really know him and then day six the angel said to her don't be afraid mary because god is pleased with you and you know i missed a little bit out from reading four there was praise there there was god's priority he's against pride he's against self aggrandizement and those who had pride plummeted went down and those who had humility i can't think of a word better than this but it's not completely appropriate they were lifted up they were promoted the hungry were filled with good things and the rich were sent empty away. God's priority, which is seen throughout the scriptures, are for those who are poor and hungry. But there's also spiritual hungry, hunger which can come 
into this Bible passage as well. I pray that God will give you a wonderful Advent, that he might be a Christ-centered Christmas where he is given all the glory, that our prayers to him will be prayers of thankfulness and praise, that he became man incarnated on Christmas Day. Over to Paul, or is it to...